Welcome everybody to this month's community challenge recap. For those of you who are new to our monthly community challenges or have never attended one of these recaps before or watched one of these recaps before, each month inside the e-learning designers community, we host a monthly challenge to help people build their e-learning design and development skills, their visual design skills, and hopefully build some work that they can put into their portfolios and help them land jobs. So for this month's uh, community challenge, it was all focused on building a branded e-learning template. And uh, I'll jump in and I'll show you everyone the challenge here in a moment. But one of the common things uh, that or one of the common misconceptions a lot of people have about our industry is that we're oftentimes creating templates and designs completely from scratch. Uh, and actually, that couldn't be further from the truth. A big part of our job oftentimes is taking a company's branding or taking a client's branding and emulating it, designing it, adjusting it so that it works as an e-learning template. And so I thought this challenge would be a great way to get people practicing looking at the designs, the templates, uh, the branding of other companies and see how that can be uh, converted into some sort of e-learning format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here, and we'll go through some of the uh, submissions we received this month, and then we'll spend the second half of the session with me working out loud, and I'll show you how I would approach building a branded uh, template. All right, so let's take a look at this month's challenge. Like I said, you know, one of the things a lot of us uh, in this industry uh, have to do as part of our job is take a company's branding and uh, translate it into an e-learning format. And I'll put a link in down in the description for this month's challenge so everybody watching uh, on YouTube or wherever you're watching, you can check this out. But this is a really great example of uh, a course that I'd worked on for a real client, West Virginia University Medicine. And this was the, the e-learning um, uh, title slide, ultimately the template that I created for them, following or looking at not only their website, but their PowerPoint templates uh, and other resources. Uh, so what I challenged everyone to do this month was create a series of slides, picking whatever brand or company they wanted to, uh, and try creating a title slide or a content slide, maybe a click to reveal slide, or even a scenario slide. And we received some really awesome submissions. So let's go through these. The first one I wanted to share was um, from Yi Ting. Uh, Yi Ting is a member in our community and one of our cohort students. And she decided to tackle Twitter's branding to create an e-learning template, which I love. Uh, right off the bat, as we look at this, obviously we can see Twitter's logo here and the bird's uh, throat here. And even the image here, what I like about this as I look at this title screen, you know, the image, this is probably some sort of stock photo, but it has these hints of blue in these graphics that really tie in well to, um, you know, Twitter's blue color. And this, so if we click here to go into uh, the first slide here. Here we have a simple content slide, which I love. I love this little line here to separate the title versus the content area. One of the things that people always struggle with when they're creating templates is how much design to add to the template. Uh, and what oftentimes happens is people will add extra elements to fill up the slide because otherwise the template feels so stark. And one of the things I always recommend is just, just leave the template stark. It's totally fine. Let your content drive the design. And so for example, maybe this would be part of the content or not, and you could just leave this blank and then whatever you're creating a course on can fill up the rest of that space. Here we have a click to reveal slide. I love this using the speech bubbles here. So I'll hover over a couple of these. And we get a little pop up here in a light box with some more content, simple. Maybe here's another one with some uh, something embedded on it. And then finally we have a knowledge check question here. Very good. Oh, we have some more. Here's a little scenario. Very good. All right, thank you so much, Yi Ting, for participating. Your template looks fantastic. All right, the next one we have is from Mary Mills, another member in our community, another cohort student, and she decided to tackle uh, Lens Crafters branding, which is very cool as part of her template. So we can see here we obviously have an image with somebody with glasses, which is what we would hope. And this looks pretty familiar, I would say, um, being um, based off Lens Crafters. I don't know what Lens Crafters branding actually looks like. Let's find out. Lens Crafters. Okay, so we have 
you know, the images here, we see the kind of the serif font built into there. Very good. We'll begin here. Simple click to reveal. I like that. What I like about this, this layout is the use of color blocking. It's really hard sometimes to create slides or templates where you have large blocks of text. But what I think Mary did a really good job here is using her colors, using this green color here for a heading, separating it with the body content with this white text. Everything's really easy to read and it looks good. I really like this here, using this blurred background with a click to reveal. We have a little accordion interaction here, which looks awesome. And some more accordion interactions. I like that. So it's kind of acting like a menu, which is good. And then we have a scenario slide here. And what do we have here? Our closing slide. Very good. Thank you so much, Mary, for submitting. All right, the next one we have is from Alice. And Alice, I love this topic. I, I would have never thought to use TED, the TED organization from TED Talks as a template. Um, but I have to say this one turned out really, really well. Like if I were to, if, if somebody were to send this to me, I would think this was created by somebody at TED. And what I love what you did here, Alice, on this template, especially on this title slide, is you did a really good job balancing this background image with your on-screen text. And that is a really, really hard thing to balance when you want to use a full image for your background. It only works really well if you're going to lay text on it. If you have something in the background on one side that's kind of empty. And this image works perfectly for that, right? Now you have all this empty space here with our, you know, the subject here on the right and our text here on the left. Um, and this is another really great, what I like about the, using TED as an example is TED's branding is actually really simple. I mean, it's three colors, it's black, red, and white, um, and it's bold text. It's, it's actually quite simple in its design. And you can see that you used all of these colors throughout. So we have our main menu here with our buttons. And this is a great example of how design doesn't have to be complicated. I mean, you're just using a couple of colors and a couple of boxes, and you have some red accents here uh, using the light gray to distinguish it, which I like. Same thing here, simple, 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 simple design. We have our title here, good use of um, typography with the uh, creating some visual contrast and hierarchy, simple use of imagery, color blocking here. And again, same thing. Simple, but it's very much on brand, which I like. I love this layout. Overlaying these, you know, simple boxes with the video. Click on the menu, it takes us back here. We'll keep going through here. There's a quote slide. Video slide. We have a click to reveal, okay. I love this for the hover state, the simple little line that's unique. And these little details like the line extending here to let you know what you're on. Very good. Ooh, I'm curious to know, Alice, I didn't notice this before. Oh, I know what you did here. This is very smart. So you took these little, um, I don't know what to call these little, markers here, not, not storyline markers, but um, like map markers. And then you put the marker on top of it. I was like, I've never seen markers like that before, but that's smart. I like that. Simple quiz slide. I like how you uh, have the feedback come in. Very good. I have a drag and drop learning about cats. Very cool. We're going to skip that. And then our summary. Very good, Alice. Very clean. Very cool. I really appreciate that one. Ted is one of my, you know, I watch TED Talk videos all the time. So uh, I particularly like that one. All right. And our final one that we got this month is from Jacob on uh, the Australian Olympic Committee. Uh, and what I really like about this, I'm going to refresh this. What I really liked what what Jacob did in this example is he used a really 
uh, he used animations really, really well to help things animate in, in ways that were interesting, but not distracting. And then the other thing that I like that you did, Jacob, is it's, it's just like I was saying with, um, uh, Alice's example, it's really hard to use full screen images in the background, but since it has a screen overlay, which is on brand, it makes it a little bit easier to read this text. So it, it works really well. Again, simple use of some animations and slide transitions. So maybe we have a content slide here, some fancy text. <laughs> Absolutely. Our objective slide. Again, good, simple use of animations. It's not distracting, but it does make it more visually interesting. And our menu slide here. Tabbed interaction. Oh, I see how it works. I love that. There's each thing animates in as you hover over it. Very good. Click to reveal. Little markers. This is cool. Major point, quote slide, or something like that. Little animations like that add a little visual interest. I love that. Now this, I remember seeing the other day, I love these hover states here with these little animations. That's simple, I love that. Very good, very good template. I love the use of the imagery and the balance and the animations. Good job, Jacob. All right, so uh, now it's my turn. So one of the things I love to do during these uh, challenge recaps is a little bit of working out loud to see what I can come up with. Um, I spent some time looking at different websites to figure out what kind of branding I wanted to emulate. And uh, I'm going to come over to Storyline here. And the one that I found, um, I was looking at different websites and I came across this website um, by a company called Buzz, uh, Buzzsprout. They are a podcast hosting uh, service. And what I liked about their website and their branding uh, one of the things that I've just been really a big fan of lately is using gradients. Like gradients used to, if you were to go back like 10 years ago, gradients were just not very popular in design, but they seem to be coming back in this more modern design when you create these really nice looking gradients. And it can be hard to design with gradients because you can quickly make a gradient look really, really bad. But what I liked about it is the use of the gradient and this curved line here along the bottom with the simple layout of the text and our buttons here. And there were a few other elements of this that I really like that I want to emulate in creating a template like this. Um, these use of these, you know, they're hovers, but using something like this for a click to reveal. Um, and I kind of, I'd love to see if I can make this animation happen in storyline where each item animates in. Either when I click on it or hover over it. And then the other element, where is it that I really liked? Like something like this, you know, you could emulate something like this as a menu or, you know, making three points that you want to point out or even a click to reveal. So whenever I tackle something like this that I'm trying to create um, a template for, if I were creating an e-learning for Buzzsprout uh, and I were to try to emulate a template, usually the first thing I do is I will either look at their website. I will go look at if they have a PowerPoint template, I'll go find that. Obviously, if they have a style guide that I have access to, I'll go find that. And then I'll also go look at any sort of marketing materials that they might have online that I can extract, you know, design from to create my template. So I'm going to open up Storyline here and I'm going to try. We'll see if we have time here. I'll be watching the, the time here. We have about 45 minutes. I'm going to try to create a title slide, obviously. I want to create some sort of menu slide maybe a content slide and then a scenario or a click to reveal slide. So let's start with the title slide. This is really the thing that's going to drive the whole uh, design of the course. Oh, don't mean to come over here. Let's go back to Chrome here. And what I wanna do is I really like this, this use of this gradient here with this curve. So I'm gonna try and figure out a way to emulate this. And I might be able to do this all in Storyline. I may not, I might have to go into PowerPoint uh, to create my graphic or even Adobe Illustrator, but we'll see what we can do in Storyline. So here on my title slide, let me get rid of this text here. Uh, I have a 16 by nine aspect ratio slide. It's what I prefer to design with. And let's go find our shapes here. And I'm usually looking for some sort of shape that I can use to 
emulate that look and feel. Right now in Storyline, you can't do, um, it's hard to edit the points of, of shapes. And so as I look at the different shapes here, I mean, there I can do a, whatever that's called a chord, whatever that is. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create that first shape. Let's do it in PowerPoint and then I'll bring it into Storyline. Okay, do a blank presentation. And you could do this in PowerPoint or if you have Adobe Illustrator, you could do that. But if I can get it done in PowerPoint, uh, I'll just do it in PowerPoint before I open up Illustrator. So I'm going to insert a shape and I'm just going to do a square here. And I'm again, I'm trying to emulate um, this background here. So the other thing I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to take a screenshot of this so that I can not only reference the shape. Oh, that is not what was supposed to happen there. Let's open the editor. So I can reference the shape and then also that gradient. So let me just put this over here. Actually, you know what I'll do? Let's duplicate the slide. That's not what I meant to do. Let's duplicate the slide and I can kind of see it down here. Okay, so I have my shape. Let's go ahead and add the gradient first. So I'm going to format my shape and let's add that gradient in there, this dark blue to this kind of teal green color. We're gonna do a gradient fill. Get rid of some of these stops here. And use my eyedropper and we'll eyedrop. Can I use it here? Nope, I'll have to bring it over here. There we go. That's fine. Eyedrop this blue color. And then we'll eye drop this teal color. Okay. Now I can get rid of that. And let's set the gradient to be from blue to green, left to right. That looks good. And I don't need an outline, so I'll go to my shape format and turn off the outline. Okay. Now to get my curvy curve down here at the bottom, one of the things I'll do is I'll edit shape. Here are my shape format tab and edit points. This is the thing you can't do in Storyline right now, uh, but I think they're gonna be adding this here eventually where you can edit the points of shapes, which will be things so much easier. Uh, so I'm gonna edit points, and to make that curve, I'm just gonna click on this point, and I get my little, they're called Bezier, Bezier curve things here. And if this were real life, you know, I could go try and obtain this little curve from the marketing department. I might spend time actually like line for line trying to match it up, but we're just trying to get the general look and feel. So I'm just going to kind of try and match it there. Let's make this bigger here as if it were really here. That's pretty close. I mean, we have more white space at the bottom, so what I can do is let's move this up a little bit like that. And that's close enough for me for today. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save the shape as an image. Uh, so I'll right click and I'll save as a picture. And the drawback is I won't be able to edit it in PowerPoint. Um, well, actually, maybe. I don't know. I could. Let me see if I can scalable vector graphic. You can do scalable vector graphics in Storyline, but I don't know if I have the most current version of Storyline. So let's try that first. Let's do gradient. I'm going to save it as a picture just in case, as a PNG. And let me put those on my desktop, actually. Do it one more time. Save as a picture, scalable vector graphic on my desktop, and we'll call it uh, SVG background. Scalable vector graphics are essentially vector graphics. They allow you to infinitely scale the, the, the graphic and image as large as you want. Uh, without losing resolution. And Storyline does support those now, but you have to have the most current version of Storyline, which I don't know if I've updated, but we'll give it a try. So I'll insert a picture from file. This will be my background. And I'll go to my desktop here. And I don't have, S I don't, I'm not updated. So I'm not going to use SVG, but I could if I updated my Storyline, which I need to do. But this is fine. I have this image here. So now I have my background. Okay. Now let's go back to the website. So we kind of have that. The nice thing about this is, is I could, if this were an SVG, or even right now, I could kind of adjust this here, oops, in Storyline, um, and stretch it. It doesn't make it look too bad. So maybe that's how we want it to look. That's fine. 
Okay, so come back to our site here. So we have some things. We have some head uh, text here that's kind of bold. Uh, we have some body text, and I love this kind of outline get it starting uh, get started button. And we have graphics here. Who knows what we'll put there uh, for our side graphics? We'll figure that out. Let me go back to storyline here. Let's add my title. So I'm going to insert some text. And usually what I do, here's my title. In real life, when I'm designing stuff like this, um, I will, uh, I'll usually just design on my slides uh, to figure out what it is that I'm doing. And then once I've decided, okay, that's my design, then I'll go back and start committing it into a series of master slides that are reusable. But usually this is what I do when I'm just getting started. So if we look at the font here, I could look up and find out exactly what font this is, but it's just a bold, chunky, sans serif font, right? So I'm going to find that here, something similar. Um, again, if this were real life, I'd probably go obtain the actual fonts from the client, but I think it, you know, an Arial black font looks good with a white text. So we'll do that. Here's my title. I might play around with that some more. I'm not sure how much I love that. Let's see what we have here. And usually it looks like they want, to, you know, it's two lines. So let's see how we can emulate that. Let's say we're creating a course on, you know, um, how to get started with podcasting. So as I look at this font here, there's a lot of spacing between each line. So let's find a different font here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with impact. I don't like that. What's this look like? That looks good. Less spacing between the lines. Why don't we do, um, let's do, let's see, Roboto Black. There we go. I like that. So that's going to be our slide title. And let's insert, I'll do a subtitle too. Who knows if I'd really use this in the course, but it's good to design for it when you're designing a template. And this will be, we'll do Roboto, which is a nice simple font. Elemental PQR, okay, Roboto, uh, regular. And we'll make it much smaller. Maybe that's my subtitle. Um, let's see here. Hmm. Learn the basics of of um, building, you know, recording your first podcast, right? Maybe that's the subtitle. Who knows? Obviously, that would vary from course to course. Let's make it a little tinier. I'll move this up, too. Okay, so we kind of have that, you know, somewhat similar. Now let's do our button here. So whenever you're doing buttons on top of an image or a gradient background like this, doing a uh, just an outline button, an empty button uh, that inverses when you hover over it usually looks best. I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to insert a button, and we're just going to do a rounded square similar to the website, and I'll make it... Make this our get started button. And I'll also make this Roboto. And for the look and feel, I'm going to format it. And I'm not going to do no fill. And I'll show you why here. So if I did no fill with a white outline border and white text, which it already has, what, it ha what happens, and this might have changed in Storyland, but we'll find out really quickly. When you usually, when you don't do a fill on a shape that the learner is going to click on, it's as if there's literally nothing there um, for the learner to click on. They have to actually click, like you see how I click right over that edge. So if I want this look and feel where it's empty, but they can go anywhere over it to get to that hover state, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill it with a white fill or any color fill. Can't read it right now, but then I'll right click format shape and I will make the fill 100% transparent. So then it's like a piece of glass. Does that make sense? Like instead of it just being empty where you can't click on anything, now it treats it like a piece of glass. So now if I preview the slide, 
Now it doesn't matter where I hover over it, it will still be clickable. So let's give it a hover state as well. Now in storyline, I don't know, it, it would be hard to create this like zooming effect. I could make the button bigger, but it's not gonna actually move. So what I'll do for simplicity's sake is I'm gonna go to my states panel and for my hover state, I'm going to make it have a white fill and I'm gonna make the text maybe my blue color. So it kind of matches there. This little blue color I got here. Actually, I wonder, now that I'm playing with this, can I make the text a gradient fill? <laughs> Hold on, because that would look cool. Format, edit, text, format shape, text box. What do I do text fill? That is the shape fill. Maybe if I go home, do this color, more colors. No, I can't do a gradient on the text, but that's okay. That would have been fun. So let's preview this now. So there we go. Kind of have that inverse effect, which looks kind of nice, right? Here we go. We have a title slide. It's not exact to um, where we go here. Exact, but it works well enough. Now, could I do something over here on the right? I guess it would depend on, um, uh, you know, what I was creating a course on. But in this case, maybe I do want this. Can I get this image? Yeah, I'll just copy this image and I'll paste it in here. And this is what I would do if I were working with a real client. Like at some point during the development stage, I'm creating a visual prototype. And so I might do something like this. And I may not actually use this graphic, right? But it's something I'll obtain from their website so they can kind of see what the look and feel would look like in a storyline story format. Um, and I'm gonna move some things around here. Let's just move this all over here. Move it up a bit. And I might actually use that graphic, right? If we're a real client, I might extract a graphic. It's generic, it's similar to what's on the website and it looks good, all right. So let's talk about a menu slide. So what can we extract from this website for a menu slide? I could stick with the gradient. Um, what I liked from this website that I think I wanna use as a menu, I like this, but I keep going back and forth on whether or not this should be a click to reveal, or maybe it's like an infographic type slide. Um, I like this for a click to reveal. I think what I'll do is I'm going to, let's go to their features page, see what's on the features page. They also use this green text here. They have different types of gradients they use throughout. Let's see what they have. Mm -hmm. I think what I'll do for simplicity's sake is I'm gonna use, I kind of like these shapes as a menu, and then I can use maybe um, this green as a header for my slides. So let's see how that plays out. What I'm gonna do real quickly, let me take a screenshot so I can extract this green color here. And actually, let me copy the clipboard, it makes it easier for myself. Let's go back to storyline here. And I'll delete that. And let's also go take a screenshot of this stuff here. Put that in the storyline. Okay. So let's say we wanted to emulate that as our main menu. And I'm gonna, I don't need that anymore because I have the green color here. So maybe I'll insert, let's start with some text. So I'm gonna take this text here, so I don't have to recreate all that from scratch. Obviously you can't see it, so let's change it to that green color. I don't know how much I like that green color with all the use of these other colors, but we'll play around with it and see what we come up with. And that's the other thing, is you don't have to emulate, you know, a company's branding and look and feel exactly, but we'll give it a try. So we'll say main menu here. And we're also gonna add, let me take this text here so I don't have to recreate that. 
I'm gonna make it black so we can see it. And we'll tell the learner, select a menu, select a topic to get started. Okay. Put it right about there. Center that as well. Maybe make this larger. I can play around with that. Okay, so what I like about these, we have three different shapes. I love the little use of the icons. We can do something interesting there. So let's create some shapes. And I'm gonna insert a rounded rectangle and I'm gonna hold shift so I can get a perfect square. And as I'm looking at this, as I'm trying to replicate this, there's a couple things I'm noticing. Like first, um, you know, there's the colors. So we have a lighter shade with a darker shade, but then also the radius of the rounded rectangle is, is small. So I don't want to leave it all chunky like that. I'm going to bring it up, make it much more subtle, um, which is a good tip. Like, you know, unless you're intentionally designing with those real big curves, subtlety is always best. And so to get this color, I'll format shape fill and do a little eyedropper and turn off the outline. And there we go. Okay, so maybe that's our first menu item. Copy and paste it. And then we'll do the same thing. Eyedropper for our purple. And then our orange color for the third one. There we go. And let's lay that out. I'll put this down here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do so I'm going to use my tools to help me align this and distribute it. So I have all three selected. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to align, align to middle. So now they're all aligned to the middle of one another. And then arrange and distribute horizontally. So now they're distributed amongst each other. But I also want them to be perfectly centered on the screen. And there's a couple ways you can do that. You could obviously use these little purple guides that show up. But what I oftentimes do is I'll group them the objects, and if I put this, you know, it's misaligned, and I can align, and as a group, if I do align and align to center, it'll align it to the center of the screen, and then I can ungroup it. So now it's perfectly centered on the screen. Okay, let's do the icons here. So we'll do another shape, and we'll do a little circle here, and I'll hold shift to make sure it's a perfect circle. Oh, and I did not do that right. Let's do that one more time. There we go. And I'll put that here. And we will use our eyedropper. Grab that blue color and turn off the outline. Let's duplicate this. I'm using my snap to guides, the smart guides to do that. So it's perfectly positioned. And the nice thing about these icons here, as I look at these, these are simple icons. Oops, now let me bring it to the front so we can see it. From the original design, these are really simple icons and I can source different icons to fit my need. Um, so I don't need to go with mail and these people and you know the time, I can change it according to whatever I'm creating content on. So let's say uh, we're talking about podcasting hypothetically. There might be a microphone. It might be, you know, a sound wave and something else. And so in this instance, I can use the icons in Storyline 360. So I'll do shape, uh, not shape, icons here. And let's do microphone. Let's see what comes up. All right. I like this one. Let's do that one. Okay. And I'll change the fill to white. I'll position that here in a moment. Let's do another icon. We'll do sound. Uh, sure, I like this one. It'd be nice if there was one without the circle, but I can probably do that. Oh, I like, here we go. I like that one. Okay, and change the shape fill to white. And then let's insert, what's another one? Mm, editing, something with editing, right? So icon, let's do edit. Let's see what comes up. Mm. Let's do um, headphones. Something related, right? I like 
this one. Let's do that. Okay, so we have some icons. Again, if I were really creating a course on this, I would you know, use appropriate icons. But again, let's pretend I'm just creating a template that I can present to a client. I'm going to select all three of these. And let's reduce the size and hold shift. Make them tinier. And position it here. Okay. Oh, and this one got really tiny. Okay. So we have that. Now the final thing is we need some, let's go back here, some text and maybe a button, right? So we can do that quickly. So I can insert, um, let's actually duplicate this text here. And I'm going to make it be the same color as, I did not mean to make that a fill of white. Let me turn that off. And I apologize if you're hearing some background noise. It is the landscapers outside using a leaf blower, which is fun. Okay, so let's make this smaller. And we can call this our, you know, uh, topic one. Make it like that. Maybe go to two lines. Topic two. Topic three. Okay. And again, we can use our eyedropper. That's not exactly perfect. All right, and as for a button, I might just replicate this. I mean, that would work here, right? Let's see, let's find out. Okay, so it sort of does. The problem we have here is it's kind of, it's too light. There's not enough contrast, which could be an accessibility issue. So what I'm actually going to do to make this work is I am going to create buttons that are kind of the opposite of what we did on that title screen. So. What I will do for this is I will format the border to be that blue color and this text to be that blue color. All right, I like that. And let's see what happens when I preview it. Okay, I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do I like the way this looks, but I don't like my hover state. So what I'll do is I'll edit my hover state and we'll do this as the inverse as well. So I'll make the button fill the blue color. If I can sample that here very carefully. There we go. And I'll make the text the white color like that. So we have something that looks something like that. That looks good. Now, I'm not going to spend time doing it with these other two. You kind of get the point. Now, as I look at this title here, I'm not loving the green color. Even though they use that in the branding, I could probably get away with not using that throughout because they, they don't always use that green color for titles. So one thing I might do to alter the design uh, to make it a bit more consistent here is I might reuse my gradient shape here. So I'll copy that. And maybe what I'll do is I will do something, shorten it like this. Let's send it to the back. Maybe make this text white. I might play around with something like that. Or what I can do is I could add that gradient down here across the bottom to give it a little bit of a look and feel, but I kind of like this. With all white text here, let's do this. Down here, so it's a little bit more spaced out. Move these items down. Okay, I like that. All right, so as for content slides, this is, like I said at the beginning, this is where people always struggle with content slides because 
they uh, usually content slides are really stark. <laughs> There's not a lot of content on them. And it really depends on the type of course you're creating. So if you're creating a course where you're going to be animating a lot of stuff on the screen and off the screen, then you want a content slide that's pretty empty. Otherwise, if you're creating a course that's maybe has text, maybe then you want to lay it out a little bit differently. So I might do a couple of things where, you know, I might take this, these two shapes, and I might put that there and we'll give it a, you know, slide title here. And that might be it. That might be my content slide, or I can make this a little shorter. I might play around with the layout a little bit. The other thing I might do, uh, and the reason why that's okay is because again, I might use this space to be where I present content. If I'm creating a course that does have text, the other thing I might do is I might continue using this gradient here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll rotate it here and I'll create a couple of different layouts. Oops, let's try that like this. And maybe I'll bring this down here. Bring that down here. And maybe stretch this over that way. Maybe not so far. Oh my. Come on. It is not letting me make this larger. What's going on? That's okay. Let's do this. Let's insert. Picture from file. Let's try it again. Let's do format. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Make it smaller. Try it one more time. I do not know why it will not let me make that bigger. That's so weird. Let's try this. Let's do... 700, see what happens. Oh, okay, it makes it huge. I'm making it like, okay, that's not gonna work. But I might use, you know, a shape here on the side. Um, I really wanna get that to work. That's really annoying me. Let's do this. Sometimes when you're working with shapes and storyline and it's not doing what you want, then you create a new shape in whatever graphic design tool you're using. I can do that here. In this case, PowerPoint. Okay, let's save that as a picture. I'll call this sidebar text. Check the storyline here. Insert picture. Sidebar text. Throw that in there. There we go. Now I don't have to fiddle with it. So I might create something like this where, you know, maybe my slide title goes up here. Oops, not that slide title. This slide title. Copy and paste that here. Maybe that lives over here. Somehow like that. And then I might insert some body text here. That's not what I intended to do. Let's copy this. That here. And when I'm creating templates like this, what I'll oftentimes do is I'll just go get some lorem ipsum text. You can insert lorem ipsum text. There's a keyboard shortcut, but I always forget it in Storyline and in PowerPoint. So I'll just copy this out. Come back to Storyline here. Paste that in. Right. Lorem ipsum is just dummy text. You'll have clients go, why does it say Italian? When it's not Italian, it's just dummy text. And I'll see how that looks and feels, right? So maybe that's, you know, some text and then I have space for a graphic or something along those lines. I could keep playing and riffing on that general look and feel. What about a scenario slide? Let's take a, let's tackle that. So for a scenario slide, let's see what we have. Let's go back to our website here. I can close this. And I still want to create this too. I think we'll have time to do that. Let's do this actually first and then we'll come back to the scenario slide. So let's say we wanted to create a click to reveal like this with these different hover states. I like that. So let's go back to storyline here and let's add our title here. And if I wanted to create a hover state like that, let's see what elements we have. We have the title. What I'll probably do is put all of these in a shape. That's the easiest way to work with the states here and triggers here. So what I'll do so I will create shapes. I can just copy these actually. I'm gonna copy all three of these. 
copy those, put them here, and we'll create a fourth one for, so we'll just do it with, yeah, I can create a fourth one. Let's go here and take a screenshot of this color here. Oh, well, come on. There we go. Now let me do that. Oh, that's fine. I want to get a screenshot of that color, but now it's hovering everywhere. Let's try this now. There we go. Throw that on here. Now I can sample that color. Format. Fill. Eyedropper. There we go. Sampled it. I'll keep that up there because I want to sample that green color, the darker green color as well. So let's say we were creating a click to reveal over here. And the learner's going to click on these different tabs. Let's make them. Let's do this here. Line this to the top. And this is how many pixels height? 71. Let's make this 71 as well. Okay, that's perfect. So 333 by 71. I can select both of these and make them 333 by 71. Done. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll put this down here, down here, and down here. And again, I'll use my align and distribute tools. We're going to distribute them vertically, make sure they're all centered align, and they just were perfect, which is good. Okay, so maybe those are my tabs. And you'll notice here, it doesn't show the color until we hover over it, right? So let's go back here, let's add some text. So uh, here's a title. Obviously we can't see it right now. So let's do this real quickly so I can sample these colors as well. And we will make this color, this blue color here. And we'll do our Roboto black, so it's nice and bold. Okay, I like that. And then um, what we can do actually, let's do this one, tab two, tab three, tab four. And what we can do is we can highlight this text, use our format painter, and do the same thing there. There, oops, format painter, here, there. Now it's copied over the font and the size and I can turn that off. And now all I have to do is change the color. So eyedropper my purple, eyedropper my orange, and we'll eyedropper the green and edit that typo. There we go. All right, now to get that look and feel where I can delete all this stuff, where what happens? So it's not till I hover over it does it show it. I'm not gonna add this black text there because I don't need that, but that I kind of like that look and feel. So what I'll do here in Storyline is for my states, let me edit states, let's add a state, make this our hover state. I'm just gonna duplicate it, but I might have to, let's do format, uh, shape fill white, and I'll still have to go back and edit the hover state. Oh, see, I wasn't as efficient as I thought I was going to be. Mm, that's okay. Copy this, put it there. We'll just do it for one today. Hover, where is it? It's fine, I'll paste it in here and then I can sample it. Okay. Did it do it? Nope, let's try one more time. There we go. Now let's delete that shape. Now, one of the cool things you can do actually with um, states in Storyline that's kind of a, a feature hidden in plain sight is you can do animated states. So I can animate this hover state. So if I select this object and I wanted to animate it in when the learner hovers over it, I can add an animation. I can do some interesting things. Why can I not add it? It used to let you do it. Can I not let you do it? Let's find out. Hmm, I guess you can't anymore. 
But I wonder what would happen if I do this. Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, I was going to make it hover in or animate in. Maybe I have to do it as a separate shape, but that's okay. Let's do this and have that. Let's do like a wipe from the left. And we'll call this tab one. And of course, I have to select all those colors again, which is fun. And I'm going to do this blue color and make it or a lot of black and make it bigger. OK, so what should happen, but we may not see that. Let's see if it works this time. Preview this, not the scene. Let's preview the slide. No, it's not animating in, but let's see what happens if I turn off format, shape fill, no fill. Let's see if this will animate in now. You may not be able to see it. Nope, it's not animating in. Maybe that's something that's changed in storyline. Either way, you get the point. Look and feel with that. And then for the layers, of course, if I were to duplicate that throughout, these wouldn't look that way. They would look more with no fill, right? But we can hover over them. I don't know why it's not showing an outline here for that. That's okay. So tab one. And again, let's copy this image. Maybe I'm just going to have these things animate in or whatever text or content I might have animate in on the slide layers, right? Let me bring this down here so we can see it more. I kind of liked how it went off the slide a little bit. So if we see here how it's kind of off the edge, so I can kind of duplicate that look and feel. Uh, and let's, just so it's a little bit more visible, let's add a very subtle drop shadow to it, even though that's not in the original one or on the website, I can play with that. That is not subtle. So I'm going to increase the size, actually make it a little smaller, increase the blurriness. So it makes it blurry, and then I'll bring the transparency way down or way up in this case. So it's way more transparent. Okay. And then maybe we'll animate in fly in from the, actually, what we'll do is we'll fade in from the left or from the right. Let's see what that looks like. So we'll add a trigger to this. Show layer, tab one when user clicks rectangle one. I didn't add a selected state, but of course I could do that if I were really building this in real life. So I have that kind of animate in like that. I can keep playing around with it. Obviously, this may not be the content, but I'm just getting inspiration, right? I could remove all this, and maybe it's just a white box with no content on it that animates in with some text content. All right, I think I'll stop there because we're down to our last few minutes or so. So first off, I want to thank everybody who participated in this month's community challenge. It was really interesting to see all of your uh, different designs based off the different brands. And like I said, sometimes if you just do this... Um, uh, just to experiment, it helps you put your graphic design skills into practice in ways that you wouldn't otherwise do on your own. And like I said at the top of the call, one of the common misconceptions that people have is that you're creating graphics or you're creating your templates from scratch. And nine times out of 10, you're actually not in the world of e-learning. You're, you're emulating somebody else's brand standards and figuring out how does that work in an e-learning format. And so even if it's not something you put in your portfolio, doing these little design experiments, playing around with other graphics um, to see what you can come up with uh, can actually, like I said, help you put your skills into practice in ways that you wouldn't otherwise do on your own. And it helps you understand the techniques between layouts and colors, and it's a great way to expand your skills. So if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell button if you'd like to be alerted the next time I publish uh, or we do a recap like this for our community challenges. And if you want to check out our community challenges or participate them uh, in them in the future, you can visit them at the eLearning Designers community at community 
www.elearningacademy.io. So for those of you joining live, thank you so much for coming. I hope you learned something new. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. Thanks for attending. And I'll be posting our next community challenge here in the next couple days. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day. Bye, everybody.